a uh, very good morning to all welcome you back to the next class of ba part second paper first english literature yesterday we talked about thomas grage elegy written in a country churchyard eight stanzas we completed and the crux of this poem is that here the writer is mourning the death of the poor people poor rustics villagers who were not given any kind of chances in their lives so let us begin with the next part of this poem the boast of heraldry the pomp of power and all that beauty all that wealth ever gave abates alike the inevitable hour the pass of glory lead but to the grave this is stanza is the crux of this poem it indicates that death does not make any kind of difference whether you are rich whether you are poor whether you are famous whether you are not popular you are going to die a day so here the writer says the boast of heraldry people who boast of the fact that they are born in a high family aristocratic family the pomp of power the people who reflect all the time that they are very much powerful they are very much magnificent they have the splendor and all that beauty the personal influence of beauty the people are showing all that all that wealth ever gave all the benefits which are conferred upon a man by his wealth abates like the inevitable hour abates means it is waiting for the inevitable hour the inevitable hour here refers to the hour of death which awaits all the great the beautiful and the wealthy the path of glory lead but to the grave the path path here refers to uh, the path of death way of death leads to the grave it ends in death the path of glory leads to the grave all those people who seek wealth fame etc in the world are destined to die death is the ultimate end of human life here the writer says that the city dwellers sophisticated people must realize that the end of every man however powerful glorious renowned he may be is that there is no difference between rich and poor high and low known and obscure great and small in the age of death nothing can save men from the hands of death all the persons who won fame and glory in different walks of life will certainly die one day next stanza nor you e proud impute to these the fault if memory over their tomb no trophies reach where through the long drawn ale and fretted vault the peeling anthem swells the note of praise nor you the poet is um, the poet is here addressing the wealthy proud people nor you e proud impute impute means lay to these the fault these here refers to the villagers lying buried in their graves the fault the defect if memory if memory here refers to the people the relatives of these people if they have not er erected any kind of tombs in their memory where through the long drawn ale and fretted vault the peeling anthem swells the note of praise il means the division of a church especially one divided by pillars from the chair fretted vault arched roof ornamented with fret work peeling anthem a sacred tune in the church swells in creeches the note of praise the praise of the poor villagers so here the writer addressing the proud ambitious and showy people of cities the poet sage that they should not lay blame on the poor villagers who lie buried in the simple graves if their friends and relatives could not erect monuments over them the poor forefathers are worried outside the church while those of the rich inside it the poet admonishes the rich and proud people of the cities that they should not hate the ordinary graves of the rude rustics it is not their fault that grand and majestic memories are not erected on their graves and they were not buried inside no dirge dirge here refers to the mournful song that is sung on the death of someone no dirge was sung 
in their funerals they they were buried unsung and unhonored so it is not their fault it is the fault of the system or rather the society so next is tanja can a storied urn or animated bust back to its mansion call the fleeting breath can owner's voice provoke the silent dust or flattery soothe the dull cold ear of death can a storied urn stony storied urn means a monument which has inscriptions telling the story or the history of the dead person or animated bust animated bust means life like statue which is erected in the memory of the people urn here also can refer to a vessel in which the remains of the dead are accumulated after their cremation or death if back to its mansion call the fleeting breath back to its mansion back to the living estate call invite or manage the fleeting breath short lived life can owner's voice provoke the silent dust owner's voice words or speeches in honor in honor of the de- dead person provoke stir up call forth the silent dust dead body or flattery soothe the dull cold ear of death flattery psychophantry the dull cold ear of death unsympathetic or merciless ears of death so here the writer is saying that the that nothing can bring the dead of dead persons to life or please them the urn to preserve their assets or a memorial statue cannot bring them back to life honors now given to them or words of flattery cannot please their senseless ears the rich and great are honored after their death by an arm or by a statue made near their grave the poet says that neither an urn with inscriptions telling their life story or any life like statue made in their memory can bring them back to life it is quite useless to mock at them that they could not have these things next is tanja perhaps in this neglected spot is laid some heart once pregnant with celestial fire hence that the road of empire might have swayed or waked to ecstasy the living liar perhaps it might be in this neglected spot the churchyard where the uncured graves of the villagers are found is laid is lying some heart once pregnant with celestial fire some heart some village forefathers pregnant full of celestial fire heaven sent inspiration they were given inspiration god gifted we can say hence that the rod of empire might have swayed hence villagers rod of empire scepter of kingdom of god swayed used effectively the poet says that perhaps in this churchyard are buried some buried some persons whose hands might have swayed or wielded the scepter or waked to ecstasy the lying, living liar might have become great musicians liar is here indicative of certain musicians so the writer here is saying that even among these buried villagers there might have been people who were born with high potential with heavenly inspiration with god gift for doing noble deeds but destiny had unfortunately denied these things to them the luxury and eminence of having magnificent tombs built over their graves was denied to them nevertheless they were endowed with extraordinary merits they had no opportunity to show them next is tanja but knowledge to their eyes her ample page rich with the soil, spoils of time did never enroll chill penury repressed their noble rage and froze the genial 
current of the soul ample page wide and expansive knowledge they might be having rich with the spoils of time did never unroll wealth of knowledge that they were having and information gathered after years of patience toil and labor labor unroll it was not opened they were not given any chance to expose themselves but knowledge to their eyes her ample page rich with the spoils of time did never unroll the vast and rich storehouse of knowledge gathered after years of toiling labor labor was unknown to them chill penury poverty which was a gloomy effect upon mind they were having uh, they were in a very poor conditions repressed their noble rage repressed it suppressed or crushed noble rage poetic fire noble feelings or sentiments in them froze crushed choked the genial current of the soul the genial current joyful feelings that were there in their heart so here the writer is saying that the tragic waste and frustration of promising persons in the village age he is talking about the poet gives expression to his intense grief at the fact that many persons endowed with talents and outstanding abilities live an obscure life unknown and unhonored no stone tells where they lie poverty stands in their way in realizing the best that they possess they are denied the benefits of education and of accumulated knowledge of mankind stored in books they remain ignorant throughout their lives extreme poverty suppresses and destroys their urge for doing noble deeds it completely damps their gay spirit spirit and enthusiasm with the fact that they fail to realize their talents they live and die unknown next stanza full many a gem of purest ray serene the dark unfathomed capes of ocean here full many a flower is born to blush unseen and waste its sweetness on the desert air purest ray serene having great purity and brightness about them there are so many gems full many a gem of purest ray serene which are having great purity and brightness about them the dark unfathomed caves of ocean bear but still they are lying deep unfathomed which cannot be measured caves of ocean here caves means bottom in the bottom part of the ocean they are lying full many a flower is born to blush unseen there are so many flowers which are very much beautiful which have which have blossomed but they are not seen by any person blush unseen they bloomed but without being noted and wasted sweetness on the deserted air the sweet fragrance of the flowers is wasted in the deserted area because nobody goes there to enjoy the fragrance of the unseen flowers so here the writer is saying that numerous gems of great beauty remain in the hollows of the ocean and have no opportunity of being seen praised or appreciated by anyone similarly a large number of flowers flowers which are blooming in the deserted area they bloom and wither in desolate lands unseen by any admirers they have no admirers so also these people they might have been very much talented they might have been very much powerful they might have been great musicians they might have been great intellectuals but they not they were not given any kind of chance in their in their lives their talent remained inherent in them that was not given any kind of exposure so this is not their fault the writer is saying so let us come to the next stanza some village hampton that with dauntless breast the little tyrant of his fields withstood some mute inglorious milton here may rest some cromwell guiltless of his country's blood some village hampton here the writer is referring to john hampton a celebrated english statesman who refused in 1636 to pay the ship money tax levied by king charles the first for which he was arrested and fined he was killed at the battle of chalgrove field dauntless fearless breast heart the little tyrant of his fields withstood the little tyrants of his fields somebody who interfered with his rights here the reference is to king charles first of england the little tyrant of his fields withstood 
सम म्यूट इनग्लोरियस मिल्टन जॉन मिल्टन ही वॉज ए ग्रेट पोइट ऑफ इंग्लैंड ही रोड द मोस्ट फेमस एपिक पोएम इन इंग्लिश द पैराडाइज लॉस्ट हिज पोइट्री इज फेमस फॉर ए मेजेस्टी ऑफ स्टाइल एंड सब्लिमिटी ऑफ थॉट हियर मे रेस्ट मे बी लाइंग डैड इन दीज ग्रेप्स सम क्रॉम्बेल गिल्टलेस ऑफ हिज कंट्रीज ब्लड देर माइट हैव बीन सम क्रॉम्बेल ओलिवर क्रॉम्बेल द लॉर्ड प्रोटेक्टर ऑफ इंग्लैंड फ्रॉम सिक्सटीन सिक्सटी थ्री टू हिज दैथ ही वॉज वन ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट्री लीडर्स इन द सिविल वॉर ही बिकेम जनरल ऑफ द राउंड हैड्स He gained battle after battle. After the execution of Charles I, he was installed as the head of Commonwealth. So here the writer is saying that in England, in the reign of Charles I, John Hampden bravely stood against the arbitrary taxation and tyranny of the king, and thereby he became famous. In the village also, there might have been some villagers. who are like hampden who might have displayed equal courage in the matter of opposing oppressive major majors of his tyrant landlord again there might be lying in the obscure graveyard of the village the mortal remains of a poet who was very much unknown he could rival the poetic excellence of famous john milton of english literature or a man who though unknown like the great patriot h cromwell himself though he has not stained his hands in shedding the blood of his countryman h cromwell had done by killing charles first thus paving his way to the throne of england therefore these unknown forefathers of the village should not be slighted or should not be mocked at so come up to the next stanza the applause of listening senates to command the threats of pain and ruin to despite to scatter plenty over a smiling land and read their history in a nation's eyes applaud fame listening senates the parliament that listens to the speeches of the country gentlemen to command to get the atten- attention of the audience the threats of pain and ruin to despite despite means to disregard the threats of pain to defy the oppression of the rulers to scatter plenty over a smiling land to scatter means to spread plenty great amount over a smiling land over the rich country here the rich country or the smiling land refers to england itself and read their history in a nation's eyes to gather from the looks of the books of the people whether they were happy or unhappy here the writer is saying that the ill no, he is talking about the ill fate of the simple villagers who are lying dead they could not have any opportunity to rise to eminence because they were poor and the circumstances did not favor them they were doomed to an obscure destiny their fate did not allow them to become members of parliament or occupy other high posts hence they could not display their orations they did not find any occasion to shine in political field there was no occasion for them to defy the threats of tyrants and to abolish oppression they could not get chances to compel the government to repeal the taxes which were cruel and were not in the interest of the people and thus they could not get honor and self satisfaction from their conduct and looks next stanza their lot forbade nor circumscribed alone their growing virtues but their crimes confined forbade to wade through slaughter to a throne and shut the gates of mercy on mankind their lot lot here refers to their destiny their luck their fortune forbade means rejected this idea nor circumscribed alone they were not given any chances they were circumscribed they were limited they were having limited resources limited power limited exposure their growing virtues the virtues were not their virtues their good qualities were not given any chances to grow up but their crimes confined and if they were having any kind of crimes they were confined into that even they were limited into that forbid to wade through slaughter to a throne they did not do anything wrong to get the kingdom just like uh, oliver cromwell it is uh, told that oliver cromwell executed king charles first 
in order to gain the throne and shut the gates of mercy on mankind they were not you see uh, they were having all kinds of mercy they were not uh, uh, the persons who were very much uh, hateful who slaughtered the people they were uh, showing the mercy they did not uh, shut the gates means they were not devoid of any kind of mercy towards the mankind but the thing is that they were not given any kind of chances thank you all for today it's enough um, the remaining poem we will discuss in the next lecture thank you all